Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial put on by BeginnersJava.com. This is going to be episode number 19, and I just wanted to tie up a few things before I assigned another homework assignment to you guys. And we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, passing by reference versus passing by value. And now, to be technical, there isn't really any passing by reference in Java per se. Um, there are a few things that are, but it's still considered passing by value just in a permanent sense. For those of you who don't know or aren't familiar with the concept, what we've been doing so far when we pass things into methods is we're passing by value. Meaning, if x has a value of uh, 5, we'll say, we might pass that into our old uh, prod sum uh, thing, and we're not sending in x. We're not doing that, but we are sending in uh, a variable with the number 5 contained inside of it. So what we're actually doing is we're copying what's inside the memory location of x. And it's difficult to say, you know, um, in, in concrete terms whether or not that's the same thing until when you see what actual passing by reference is. Um, in Java, you don't have that option to pass by reference uh, the same way, but there are certain things that are. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create two functions. We're going to do our old prod sum over again, and then we're going to pass an array into a method as well. So here's what we'll do. We'll create uh, one method, and we'll say int... Uh, x will do y and sum. And we'll set uh, x equal to 7, y equal to 5, and sum equal to 0, just to have it initialized. And then we're going to create an array, and we'll call this int and array. And as I've stated before, you can put a, a semicolon here, you can, or you can um, put the brackets here if you want. Um, it's really up to you. Um, it doesn't much matter. But then we're going to say equals new int and then we're going to put in 5. Um, the reason why we're doing new int is because we're telling the compiler the exact size we want the array. So this way it puts aside enough memory when it creates it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say 4 int i equals 0, i is less than 5, i plus plus, and then we're going to do an array of i is equal to i. So we're setting it equal to the index, so now it will contain 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now what we have are three variables, uh, sum x and y, and we have an array with the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, as set by this loop. So what I'm going to show you now is how we handle these things uh, when we pass them into uh, another method. So for now, I'm just going to compile this to get rid of the compiler warning there. I didn't output anything or really do anything. So we're going to make a new file, and we'll just call this uh, methods dash one, or uh, no, you, methods one, I suppose. And all right we're going to make two different methods and we're going to uh, look at how they work. So, okay, we're using an array, which means that we're going to be doing a public static. Uh, we'll return the array back, I suppose, and we'll call this array handler and it's going to take in an array of ints and we'll name that an array. And so we'll come down here and we'll set up a return on it so it doesn't have that annoying red underline that drives me bonkers. And we'll say return an array. Okay, so that's all set. Now we're going to do another one and we're just going to sort of do the uh, the same thing, static int, and we'll just call this num handler. And that's going to take in int x and int y. And 
we're going to do int sum equals zero. And then we can just wrap this one up real quick by doing a couple of things. We'll do x plus equals 10, y plus equals 7, sum equals x plus y, return sum. So that's all settled. Now, the reason what I'm doing here is I'm intentionally changing the values of x and y. So what we'll do then, I suppose, is do a system.out.println and we'll output the value of x is, and then we'll do a plus x, and then we'll say, and the value of y is, and then a plus y. And then I suppose we'll go up to the line above it and we'll mention that this is inside the method because that seems pertinent. Okay, and I suppose we'll copy that. Um, uh, actually, we won't need that. Okay, so... Um, and just one more, we'll say, and the sum of sum is sum. Yeah, it gets redundant typing like this. And the sum of, or and the value of sum is, Jesus, can't type today, plus sum. Okay, so that's going to show us all of our values and everything. Um, I suppose I'll set this before I try to output it and then it just gets returned so this is all settled but now we need to pass the array in which is going to be a little bit different um, it's just getting sent in like that we can change the name if we want we can say an other array we don't have to keep the same name I'm just doing it because that's what I typically call my arrays if I don't have a good purpose for them so what we're going to do is rather than do any sort of stuff to it, I suppose what we'll do is we'll take a an array and we'll say five or no, because it's only five long. An array three multiplied by equal three. So that means the fourth position in the array, which is going to be one, two, three, four has a value of three. We are going to multiply that by three, which means that it should turn into nine. So we'll get rid of a couple of spare lines here, and now we'll construct the part where we pass these to the array. So array handler and num handler are our names. And so we'll do, uh, I'm returning an array. Okay. So we'll do an array equals uh, array handler. Oh, nope, methods one dot array handler. And then we're going to pass in an array. And I need to put that at the end there. And now we'll do the same thing with sum, passing that into our uh, other method. So we'll say sum equals and it was number handler or num handler. I'm sorry. Was it? Yeah, num handler. Oh, right, because I'm supposed to pass in x and y. That's why. Okay. So, what we have now is we're calling these two methods and we're passing in the values of x and y and we're passing in the actual array of an array. So, what I'll do just to end this is do a system.out.println and I will show you the values of each of these things. I'm going to check the time real quick. About 10 minutes. And... I just want to make sure I have the syntax right on all this, so I'll just copy that. And I'm using an array of three. So we'll copy that, 
and I'll change and copy this so we're then inside the uh, inside no oh, come on inside of main and I suppose I'll just add a couple of blank ones of these so we can uh, have a few blank lines ah come on I cannot type at all today this is awful okay and then we'll come down to uh, we'll copy paste this I suppose and then we will simply say uh, we'll do a blank line or two and then we'll say the value of an array 3 is now and remember we're calling this from within main it's no longer in the method an array 3 sorry about the amount of uh, chitter chatter and the lack of palpable stuff I'll show you what we've got now and hopefully this will run so inside the method the value of x is 17 and the value of y is 12 so therefore the sum is 29 inside of main it's back to 7 and 5 which is what they were set for meaning once we exit out of the method these values and whatever we change in this method no longer exists if we wanted to change what we were using these for we might want to return an array and then set the values based off of what was in the array or we could just call multiple methods um, we'll also be getting into classes shortly which will uh, show us a lot more about that and mind you the sum is still 29 because the sum was returned by the array or by the method I'm sorry so as you can see we returned the sum which we set inside the array so that still works as intended now as for an array of three you'll notice that that has retained its value because arrays as well as objects are always known as pass by reference even though there's not really such a thing in Java so the moral of this story is if you're ever passing an array and you do any type of a, a anything to it you have to remember that those changes that you're making to it are permanent there are ways that we'll get into where we can copy an array or that we can just take the value from an array and pass it but if you're ever passing a full array just remember you are passing the real array any changes you make stick all right and with that said i think that the homework for you guys is really just going to be something simple it's going to be uh make me a program that uses two or more files to do some type of a complex calculation you can have it solve a math problem you can have it tell me somebody's grades in a class after you've input them into an array you can do anything you want I just want you guys to show me that you understand methods you understand arrays you understand pass by value and pass by reference and you understand the basics of uh, program encapsulation if you feel comfortable using private uh, methods after the uh, lesson 18 even better but for now I'm going to leave it here thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you'll join me next time have a good one